It's official! The 2020 Summer Olympic Games are scheduled to take place between the 23rd of July and 8th of August, and the Paralympic Games between the 24th of August and 5th of September. Now, on one hand, that's wonderful news for anyone who loves the Olympics, but on the other hand, there's the ongoing coronavirus pandemic to consider. Is it safe to have so many people, more than 10,000 athletes alone, gathering together at this time? Will there be enough vaccines to go around? What's happening? The lead up to the Olympics, already delayed a year, has happened alongside continuing concerns about the state of the pandemic in Japan, which is now undertaking its fourth state of emergency. Japan is taking a tougher approach to help curb the spread of COVID-19 just two weeks before the Olympics is set to begin. Organizers will hold Olympic events in Tokyo without spectators, a move they say was a heavy decision. Organizers are still considering allowing spectators for events outside Tokyo that are not under a state of emergency. Well, all of this comes shortly after the Japanese Prime Minister placed Tokyo under its fourth state of emergency due to a spike in COVID cases. The state of emergency will last through August 22nd, two weeks after the Games end. Ministers and organizers have now decided to ban all spectators from the Olympics. Originally, up to 10,000 Japanese fans were to be permitted to attend. Tokyo 2020 President Seiko Hashimoto said she was sorry to those who purchased tickets and everyone in local areas. It was announced back in March that international fans would not be able to attend the Games. Taking into consideration the impact of the Delta strain, and in order to prevent the resurgence of infections from spreading across the country, we need to step up virus prevention measures, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga said. In May, with hospitals exceeding capacity and thousands of new infections ramping up the national case count every day, 6,000 primary care doctors signed an open letter to Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga, begging him to cancel the Olympics. Public opinion polls also charted strong opposition to the event. But at this point, the Games reportedly cost Japan about $25 billion, making them the most expensive ever. The IOC also has billions in broadcast money tied up in the spectacle all of which has apparently provided strong incentive to move ahead. So, what's happening with COVID in Japan? Overall, the country has had relatively low case numbers, but a new wave of infections began in April. As of 8th July, there were 812,089 confirmed cases and 14,848 deaths. Compared with 5 million cases and 128,500 deaths in the UK, Japan only began vaccinating people in February, later than most other developed nations, and just over 15% of Japan's population of nearly 126 million people is fully vaccinated. There is currently a long list of countries whose residents are banned from entering Japan due to the COVID-19 pandemic. These countries include the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and a host of other nations around the world. As Japan attempts to stop the spread of the new UK strain of COVID-19, Entry of visa holders from all countries, except those on business travel or on the unrestricted list, has been paused. All arrivals into Japan must self-quarantine for 14 days. The safety protocols that organizers are putting in place are, for starters, to ban all foreign spectators from attending any of the events, if not necessarily entering the country. Meanwhile, a decision about domestic spectators and possible crowd caps is expected this month. Earlier this spring, Tokyo Organizing Committee President Seiko Hashimoto told the New York Times that officials were ready to have the games with no spectators, if need be, but still had hope that we want as many spectators as possible to see the games if the situation so allows. Japan is not requiring athletes to get vaccinated ahead of arrival, although last month Pfizer agreed to donate shots to people working at and competing in the games. Athletes will be tested daily whereas their coaches and other officials will be tested daily for the first three days and then regularly thereafter. Visitors have been asked to refrain from using public transit and visiting bars and restaurants, while individual events will reportedly set their own safety guidelines. As for the famously Olympic Village, a first round of guidance issued in February outlined six feet of distance between athletes outside sports settings. The thing is, Coronavirus cases overshadows the last-minute preparations in Japan. 
creating chaos days before the opening ceremony. The organizers of the Tokyo Olympics, delayed one year by the pandemic, are struggling to manage public anxiety about the Games after a cluster of coronavirus cases that threaten to overshadow the festivities. As about 20,000 athletes, coaches, referees, and other officials have poured into Japan in recent days, more than two dozen of them have tested positive for the virus, including three cases within the Olympic Village. An additional 33 staff members or contractors who are Japanese residents working on the Games have tested positive. Olympics organizers have said their measures, including repeated testing, social distancing, and restrictions on movement, would limit but not eliminate coronavirus cases. The Games, originally scheduled for 2020, were postponed a year in the hopes the pandemic would have eased and they would herald a triumphant return to normal. Instead, they have become a reminder of the staying power of the virus and have fed a debate over whether Japan and the International Olympic Committee have their priorities straight. Such is the unease that Toyota, one of the prime corporate sponsors of the Games, announced on July 19th it would not run any Olympic-themed television advertisements during them. This is Jun Nagata, the company's chief communications officer, and he told reporters, There are many issues with these games that are proving difficult to be understood, according to the Associated Press. And this is Masa Takaya, a spokesman for the Tokyo Organizing Committee. He said athletes who were in close contact with those who tested positive would be allowed to train if they otherwise followed the isolation restrictions. Athletes are tested daily, and if they test negative within six hours of a competition, they will be allowed to play. The Japanese public remains anxious about the Olympics amid a slow rollout of vaccines and a recent rise in coronavirus cases in the capital. Daily case counts have exceeded 1,000 for several days for the first time since mid-May. Tokyo is under a state of emergency. A poll by the Kyoto News, a wire service, released showed 87% of those surveyed said they were worried about hosting the Olympics during the pandemic. So, are the safety protocols going to be enough? Unfortunately, that remains to be seen. As previously mentioned, though, many people in Japan, along with a few athletes like Naomi Osaka and Roger Federer, have aired concerns about going ahead with the competition. I think all of the establishment in Japan are colluding, Kaiori Hayashi, a professor of media studies at the University of Tokyo, told The Times. We have been getting many reports about the next wave and the next next wave, and as I see the slow progress of the vaccine rollout, we cannot really expect that everybody would be vaccinated by the Summer Olympic Games. I cannot really see the point of holding the Games now. Continues to hold a commanding Olympic lead. In the women's 100 meter freestyle, it's Dawn Fraser of Australia who strokes her way to Olympic history. She's in lane four and out to win this event as she did in 1956 and 19...